CTE Pro 1 True Series video 26 Cycling into a Shortened Learning Curve. I'm pretty sure that most of you would be interested in an exercise that can shorten your learning curve for working with the methods of center to edge aiming that fall under the umbrella of CTE Pro 1 without any doubt. A favorite exercise of mine is cycling. Just two or three days ago, I spent a couple of very intense sessions of cycling between basic CTE and disguised pivoting. I would spend one hour working with basic CTE, playing the nine ball ghost, and then one hour of working with disguised pivoting, playing the nine ball ghost. And I did uh, multiple sessions of that, cycling back and forth over a two-day span. And when I do that, without fail, I always come out as a stronger CTE Pro 1 practitioner on the other side. It's my visual skills become stronger, my physical uh, 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 ability to follow what my vision is doing strengthens and just the whole system just gets deeper. That's one thing about CTE that I've said over and over and over and it's true. It keeps getting easier and easier. Uh, let's take a look at the cue ball object ball positioning for your cycling exercise. Uh, the cue ball is one half diamond back from the head spot. This object ball is at the one one diamond intersection, and this object ball is at the three uh, one intersection. These two shots mirror each other. This is a right cut into the side, this is a left cut into the corner. It's really great to purposely work with mirrored shots when you're learning center to edge aiming because it gives you balance visually and physically. The cycling exercise that I'm going to encourage you to do involves three CTE Pro 1 methods. Pro 1, basic CTE, and disguised pivoting. We're going to start off with Pro 1. This is a 15 outside of this pocket. If I set up in the parallax and look at this visual and look at the sight line, the uh, object ball is thin to the pocket, so it requires an outside pivot to thicken that thin relationship to the pocket so that I can have a slight overcut alignment to center pocket. Pro 1. For this shot, it's a left cut, so you're going to start off with your head slightly angled to the left so that you can see left cue ball edge to object ball aim point A, center cue ball to right object ball SP15, and you can make the parallax connection from uh, those two lines. Inside cue ball quarter to object ball core. Now, from this position I can step the cue ball by looking at the outermost edge of the cue ball for its right side. Now, I have a sight line that is center cue ball to right object ball SP15. When I look at the right side of the cue ball, it automatically turns to a new center. That turning is what I refer to as stepping. So, from this position here, I can see the sight line, but when I shift my vision over to this half of the ball, the stepping phenomenon occurs, giving me a no-judgment shot line. That's what I sweep to. Now, in Pro 1, there's a couple of sweeps that occur. There's the physical sweep. The physical sweep it's just, it's a bend to the uh, right. Now for the left-handed player, 
it's, it's going to be more of a uh, rotation that is felt in the right shoulder as you go to the right. So for the physical sweeps, whatever I describe for the right-handed player is reversed for the left-handed player. So, uh, Pro One is, uh, is what I refer to sometimes as a hybrid uh, approach because your head is angled at ball address to see your vision, angled to the left. But when I do my right visual sweep to the step center, my head will unangle so that I can use my favorite line of sight, which tends to be right in the middle for me, maybe, maybe slightly to the right of the bridge of my nose. I like to stay as centered as I possibly can, given a choice. So, there is the uh, perfect visual. I step the cue ball, and I do a right sweep. This all happens at computer-like speeds. So, boom. I see it, and I align to it. Don't ever think that CTE Pro 1 is complex. There's a lot of steps to do. It's light and fast. Of course you have to go through uh, 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 intentional learning, deliberate learning, to program your your, your, your visual, uh, uh, the, the visual aspect of the system. You have to program what you do physically. I mean, it only makes sense to me that you should want to know what it is that you're doing. So, it's, uh, it's lighting fast, it's faster than feel, and it's objective. So you're going to shoot this shot ten times. So if you're a, if you're a right-handed player, you're just going to just have your cue out to the left. Why do you have that cue out to the left? So you can see what you're doing. <laughs> you don't want it up here somewhere in your way. You want it out of your way so that your eyes have space to work without something in front of it. So from there, do that sweep. So learn to do that right visual sweep. Keep in mind, the left-handed players, you're going to feel this turn in your right shoulder as you do your right visual sweep. Then, switch over to the mirrored shot. This is a cut to the right. It's a 15 outside. If I look down the sight line, it's going to be thin to the pocket. So it needs an outside sweep. Now, this time, as a right-handed player to do my left visual sweep, I'm going to feel the rotation in my shoulder. So, it's just a rotation. My head will start off angled to the right, and then I feel this rotation. As I go down, my head will unangle. The left-handed player will not feel the rotation on this shot, the left-handed player is going to feel the bend for the left visual sweep. It's okay to go back into the truth series and look at my instructions for the 15 outside for Pro 1. And while you're at it, check out Basic CTE and the sky's pivoting for what I had to say for the 15 outside. It will strengthen what you're doing here with your cycling exercise. Let's move on to uh, basic CTE. I love basic CTE. The more I cycle between basic CTE and the sky's pivoting, uh, the, the, the stronger I get with it. Don't think of CTE as basic CTE as something that's uh, amateurish or anything like that. It can be an extremely potent professional approach for playing. 
So don't, don't underestimate basic CTE, please. Uh, this is the 15 outside. Uh, you'll start off with your head angled, just like for probe one, but you're not going to step the cue ball. For basic CTE, uh, uh, from the purest point of view, you do not step the cue ball while standing. For Pro 1, you unangle your head when you go down. For basic CTE, you're going to shift and angle your head further to the left. That's the nature of basic CTE. So, I'm going to go down on the sight line. The perfect perception that center cue ball to the SP15 uh, sight point gives me. If I have that perfect perception, then my parallax line is intact, my aim line is intact. So, so my head's angled this way. I'm going to go down to the outside of the sight line with my cue and my bridge V. And as I go down, my head turns, shifts, pokes more to the left in order to continue to see the perfect perception. Now, so when I go down and I put my cue to the outside, what's that cue on the outside for? It's just like in Pro 1. I get my cue out of the way so I can see. In basic CTE, I have my cue out of the way to the right of the sight line so I can see. See what? The sight line and the step center. Much easier to work with that cue out of the way. Now, when you butt your bridge D, your cue, up to the sight line by about a half a tip, that's the perfect location to be able to pivot your cue to be on the missile. The no imagination shot line. Um, it's a no judgment shot line. But you don't want to just leave that to chance. As I said, when I go down and step the cue ball, I can see the shot line from here. It, it, it has nothing to do with the pivot uh, having some kind of a magical aspect to it. I can see the shot line before I pivot. Therefore, my bridge V will tweak by way of my vision directly or peripherally or my physical intelligence is seeking my bridge V to be on that line. Our, our bodies are amazing. Our, our vision and what we can do physically is simply amazing. So when, when I go down to the outside of this right here, I'm already stepping the cue ball and my bridge V is already seeking to be on that step center line that extends backwards this way. There's nothing magic about the pivot. It's very logical. That's how come you can use a uh, a nine millimeter uh, uh, shaft or, or a 15, you know, fat millimeter shaft. So, um, basic CTE, 15 outside. I go down on the sight line, my head pokes further. My bridge V must be on the outside of that sight line. Step the cue ball by looking at the right side, the outermost right edge of the cue ball. There's my step center. I pivot to that step center. And I have a perfect alignment as a slight overcut to that pocket. Basic CTE for this object ball. I'm going to go to the outside, which is going to be to the left in this case. So, uh, right cue ball edge to C. Center cue ball to left object ball SP15 from the parallax position inside cue ball quarter to object ball core. I'm not going to step the cue ball. I'm going to lock in on the uh, sight line. I'm going to come down with my bridge V to the outside of the sight line. And I'm going to, there's, this, there's the perfect perception of stepping the cue ball. My bridge V is on that extended line backwards so that when I pivot, 
I am at the center cue ball based on the outermost edge for the left side of the cue ball. When I went down on this sight line to the outside and I pivoted to center, my cue is aligned to the center based on the outermost edge of the cue ball for the right side of the cue ball. Oh, that's what I love about aligning my cue to center for center edge aiming is that I align my tip to the center of the cue ball based on only one half of the cue ball. I'm not trying to put my cue in the middle of the cue ball between two edges. That's conventional. That's traditional. And ultimately, it's guesswork. Yes, you can shoot hundreds of thousands of shots and get darn good at it. I've never said otherwise. But, when you do it that way, there's a zillion different shots. When you do it this way, with 15, 30, 45, and 60, you, you, you've just got a handful of shots that you're doing over and over and over, and they're objective. So, all right, so you're going to shoot 10 basic CTE shots, left cuts, and then 10 uh, of this one, the mirror version. So that puts you up to 40. And I, I forget, but you're going to do this for 21 days. I want you to do it for 21 days. Um, if possible. So that's 60, 60 shots, 21 days. And I will, I will assure you that you'll come out on the other side as a much, much stronger practitioner of the three methods that we're uh, presenting here. Okay, disguise pivoting. Disguise pivoting it is really nothing more than basic CTE. With disguise pivoting, if you want to step the cue ball up here, you can, and in fact, you're going to because it happens automatically. Boom, it's done. It's like, there's my visual, there's the shot line. Now, just like basic CTE, my head's going to poke further to the left, but instead of going outside of the sight line, I'm going directly to the step center. So, there's my visual. Go right to the step center. And the only thing that I might do, and I do like doing this, I take a look at the tick location for the SP-15 on the object ball to see if it's rotated in the correct position. In other words, is my sight line that's in the background intact? So when I drop, when I drop on this shot, the sky is pivoting. I'm basically working with the inside of the cue ball to the outside of the cue ball to create that gearing effect. The ticks are rotating, and if that SP15 tick is in the right place, I notice it just like that. So, essentially here, I'm doing a right physical sweep, but there's no visual sweep because my head's not sweeping anywhere my head is going to shift further to the left so that I can maintain my visual. You see, when I go down on this, my eye, but my right eye is dominant for sight line and stepping here. So when I drop down on this shot at the missile, my right eye is still dominant for uh, uh, the sight line and for the stepping and for actually seeing down the, uh, the missile. It's my mid-face vision center that's dominant for seeing my tip at the target, which is the step center. Nothing on the object ball. So, uh, something else to notice is when I drop down on this shot, my arm is going to be in the out position, just like it would be for basic CTE. It's in the out position. Because you see, I'm aligning 
to the center that's based on the outermost edge for the right side of the cue ball. Now, when I uh, line up to do a disguise pivot for the one ball here, my visuals are right cue ball edge to object ball aim point C, center cue ball to left object ball SP15, from the parallax of inside cue ball quarter to object ball uh, core. Now look at the left side of the cue ball for stepping. That's automatic. I can see the sight line. I can see the step line. Sight line, step line. I can, I can dual focus between the two. Uh, it happens automatically. Don't try to make stepping such a complex, complex activity because it's natural. It's natural. When you take a step, when you're looking at that big brown barn and you take a step, you're going to change centers. When I'm looking at this sight line here and then my eyes move over to this side of the cue ball, I'm going to change centers on the cue ball just as if I took a step for changing the center of the round barn. This cycling exercise is going to help you to wrap your mind around this because you're going to be in a you're going to be in a 21 day study. So my arm is in the out position here. Now, when you're working with mirrored shots, you get balance. My head is poked to the left for this shot. For this shot, my head is going to be shifted to the right and my arm is going to be in the end position. So for the, for the four ball, my arm was in the out position. For the one ball, my arm is in the end position. Develop an awareness for what it is you're doing. This is a finite system. Everything about it, I've just told you. So, you're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over. So if you shoot two or three hundred shots during a typical day using CTE, you, your, your rate of growth is going to be, it's going to be fast. And if you're shooting 500 or 800 shots a day, it's going to be, it's going to be super fast. So, what I want you to do is to do this exercise. Ten shots for pro one. Each, each cut. Ten shots for basic CTE, left cut, right cut. And then ten shots each for the uh, disguised pivoting method for a total of 60 shots. Do this for 21 days or as many days as you possibly can. And then at the end of 21 days, I want somebody to remind me. I'm going to make a note of it myself, but a reminder won't hurt we're going to take a look at one more uh, uh, exercise to where you're cycling using Pro One Basic CTE and Disguise Pivoting. So I, I want to take you I want to take you a little bit further along so that you can really maximize your uh, experience with cycling so that you can shorten your learning curve. Uh, see you in Truth Series video 27.